Hi, this is Artifax of Mars, and this is a video response to a request by Pastor of Second Life House of Prayer. He wanted me to elucidate on why it is I feel that House of Prayer is possibly a cult. I'm not really saying it's a cult, I'm saying it shares some characteristics. And I did a summary before. This time I'm going to go a little more in depth. I chose a website. I had some information on it. Originally I was going to do three websites, but it turns out that the information is all pretty much the same. So I'm only going to do the one. We'll get into that in a minute. There's an incident that kind of relates to House Prayer, but not directly. I call it the Maisie 4 Christian Patio incident. It kind of shows how a lot of these Second Life Christians are. This is why I'm an agnostic, by the way. I was, uh, it was July 21st, 2013. I was a regular member of the Christian Patio. I visited there quite often, as a matter of fact. One day, they put out a message. Go there for this and this. So, I went there, and I couldn't get in. I was bouncing around on top of the cinema and trying to, on top of where they were, and I was trying to figure out how to get in. All of a sudden, I found myself back in my place, and I got this message I'd been banned from sin. I didn't know what Dickens was going on. So, I started chatting it up with people on chat group, and next thing you know, I get banned by a chat from chat group. Maisie Four is the person, whoever she is, who did this. She's kind of a favorite at House Prayer, though I had not seen her in a long while. She used to be up at the campfire in the morning, and I it re I really sat there and chewed on it, but I couldn't say nothing because uh, it, they didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't want to drag House Prayer into it, so I didn't say anything, but I was really chewing that. That shows you the arrogance of these people. She didn't... She talked to me. She apparently didn't think she had done anything wrong. And I've had other problems with other Christian Sims as well. One ripped me off. Lynn Applewhite was like a buck and a half. Nothing big. All right. Let's get started with the analysis, and we'll show you how House Prayer rates. The group displays excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment to its leader, and whether he's dead or alive, regards his belief system, ideology, and practices as truth, as law. Basically, are they rabid supporters of the person or not? Mm, I find the answer interesting. Yeah, this one's true. Uh, people that are really f fiercely loyal to the guy, he pissed me off enough times that uh, I just left the freaking sin. He's arrogant beyond belief as far as I'm concerned, but a lot of people that are just fiercely loyal to him, so I'd say this one's true. No apologies. Alright, question number two. Questioning doubt and dissent are discouraged or even punished? And I'm going to go over this. Uh, yeah... You don't want to dissent anything. You want to agree with everything that you're told to agree with. Campfire is a little bit different. Campfire by the beach. You can get away with a little bit more, but generally speaking, this one's true. Punishment is you disagree with them, you're out of there. And they just toss you out of there. So this one's true. It's unfortunate, but it's the way it is. Hmm. 
mind-altering practices such as meditation, chanting, speaking in tongues, denunciation sessions, and debilitating work routines are used in excess, of, in excess and serve to suppress thoughts about the group and its leaders. Uh, nope. I've never observed this. Uh, they don't do any of that stuff at all, mind altering practices, all that. No. That one is without question false. I've never observed it. So, more of a mainstream type of thing, actually. So we'll move on to the next one. The leadership dictates sometimes in great detail how members should think, act, and feel. For example, members must get permissions to ch date, change jobs, marry, or leaders prescribe what type of clothes to wear, where to live, whether or not to have children, how to discipline children, and so forth. Uh, no, there is control of the avatars, but there isn't that level of control. Uh, you know, they dictated that you have to have a human avatar, and that's really irks me because it's kind of a pain in the neck to change out my RP avatar if I just want to go someplace. Because not changing out of it is a problem, but changing back, because it has to be done in stages or second screen. Second life screws up. I'd say this one's false. So we're running two to two. I already know what the final ratio is. The group is elitist, claiming special exalted status for itself and its leaders and members. For example, leaders considered the Messiah, especially being an avatar of the group, or Android leader is on a special mission to save humanity. This one is true to a point. Because they have openly stated a number of times that they are claiming second life for Jesus, which means they want to take take over second life and basically dictate what everybody can wear and what they can say and so forth. That, of course, is not going to be feasible, but they've openly stated that's their goal. So I would say yes. This one's true. At least to a point. This is virtual reality. Remember that. The group has a polarized us versus them mentality, which may cause conflict in wider society. Uh, are they us versus them? You betcha. I've heard this many times. They don't like a lot of these other sins. And this is sin, that's sin, everything else is sin, and so on and so forth. Yeah, this one's true. So at this point, we're running 4 to 2. Um, it's gotten worse over time, too. They're not very accepting of anything anyone else does, so that's a very cult-like item. The leader is not accountable to any authorities, unlike, for example, teachers, military commanders, or ministers, priests, monks, or rabbis of mainstream religious denom denominations. Still having problems with that. Uh, well, if we limit this to the scope of House of Prayer and Second Life, quite frankly, the answer to that is true. Um, he's done his best to take over things there, and I it got to the point where it's just a headache, because well, all I can do is really sit there and uh, sitting there like a rock, basically. So I'd say that's true. 
The group teaches or implies that it's supposedly exalted ends justify whatever means it deems necessary. This may result in members participating in behaviors or activities that would have considered they would have considered res reprehensible or unethical before joining the group. For example, lying to family, friends, collecting money for bogus charities. No. That one is double, triple, quintuple faults. I will stick up for him on that. I have not observed this whatsoever. So we'll throw that one out right now. Next one. Leadership induces feelings of shame and our guilt in order to influence and our control members. Often this is done through peer pressure and subtle forms of persuasion. Well, it is Christian, but uh, they take this to access. I know they got to talk about sin and all that. I understand all that. It's really taken to access, in my opinion. So, yeah. This one's true. Uh, everything's sin. We're all sinners. I sin today. You sin today. And so on and so forth. And why don't you say a sinner's prayer and you want to be forgiven? Well, I'm human. I don't want to be forgiven. I'm sorry. Uh, next question. Subservience to the leader or group requires members to cut ties with family and friends and radically alter the per personal goals and activities that they have before joining the group. Uh, what do you think? Do you think a uh, virtual reality group sim would uh, do this type of thing? No. This one's false. I never saw anything like this on uh, House of Prayer. I would say no. And that's not that level of control. How are you going to do that in virtual reality anyway? They might do it in real life, I wouldn't know, but not in virtual reality, no. The group is preoccupied with bringing in new members. Um, basically, do they go on big, huge recruiting drives and all that to get new members there? They really don't have to do that. Uh, it's really not necessary. They get people in there all the time. Some to come to grief, some... Uh, curiosity, answer to that is false. There's no preoccupation that I ever saw with that type of thing. Basically what I saw was control. Uh, the thing that kind of teed me off was being told, go change your avatar, and I was just in my boar avatar. Answer is false on that one. The group is preoccupied with making money. Um, now let me qualify this. They do have tip jars out, but you really can't blame them. Those sims are expensive. And they do act, do like people, have people make donations. However, uh, you know, those sims are expensive. You can't blame them for wanting to get tips and stuff. I've put in, in tips in there many times. Answer that's false. There's no real preoccupation with making money or anything that I have ever observed there, in the all fairness. Um, like I said, they have tip jars out, oh, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that, everybody that has a sim does that, so I'd say no. Let's we'll stick up from on that. 
Members are expected to devote inordinate amounts of time to the group and group land activities. This one is a little bit tough as far as this one is just tough calls, simple as that. Um, but I don't think they're expected to. They're encouraged to. Their group messages out all the time, but nobody ever said I want you to be there. True, they do TP you sometimes, but most of the times it was things I wanted to go to anyway. I you're still in control with the button. I would say no. That's false. I'd say no on that one. Members are encouraged or required to live with and or socialize only with other group members. Well, n probably not. Um, this one's tough because it's virtual reality and how are you going to enforce something like that? I try to have people be loyal to them. Yeah, everybody does that. So I can't follow them on that. That's false. They're pretty good with that, I would say, and no. So we'll move on to the final question, and then there's going to be narration at the end. I want to clarify some things. The most loyal members, true believers, feel there can be no life outside the context of the group. Feel there's no other way to be in, often fear of reprisals to themselves or others if they leave, or even consider leaving the group. Uh, it's another tough call, actually. There are some true believers there, but... Once again, it's virtual reality. So I would say no on that faults. This one was a tough call. I'm not really even sure, to be honest. But I'd say, based on what I saw, probably not. Okay, so some of you may be asking, what is the bug that I have up my anal cavity concerning this issue of house prayer? Well, I don't really, you know, their niche, they've been scratched. I'm going to miss a lot of people there, but i got to stick to my principles. I mean, good freaking grief. I'm an adult, I can choose my own avatar. Uh, and second life is not real life, alright? Let's be clear on this. Second life is virtual reality, and... A lot of people use it to escape. Some people use whiskey to escape. I'm not using whiskey here. I'm using virtual reality to escape from real life. Why do I want to escape from real life? Well, ISIS, Ebola, Russia, Ukraine, South China Sea, need I go on? <laughs> I mean, I can't escape forever, but I like to have a little break from it sometimes. And I don't want to happen to want to use a contemporary human avatar. Which is what they want you to use. I could have probably gotten a clown avatar or a knight in shining armor. I'm sure somebody's probably made those. But the problem is, I guarantee you they would have banned them right on the spot. They have a Darth Vader avatar. I Basically, I don't want to use contemporary human avatar. I do have cowboys, which I know they'll allow, and Star Trek, they'll allow. 
with just aggravation, you know, you should treat people like, like adults. If it's not, even the RP sims allow other avatars, they'll generally have like a welcome center, like Amityville does, where you can go and you don't have to be in your RP avatar if you don't want to. They might, but House of Prayer, they jump on me and you go there, write your own business, uh, change your avatar to human. That's not acceptable in my book. There's nothing I can do about it, except do what I did. I pulled four groups, and says, that's enough of this. So that's the bug that I have up my anal cavity. I'm done with the place until they get a new leadership. That's the bottom line. I don't mean to rag on too much. I'm just totally fed up with being treated like a little kid like that. And I'm running out of time, so I'm going to have to continue this in a minute. And yeah, for part two of the bitch X session, you know, rules against nudity and stuff, I understand that. I am perfectly okay with that type of thing. The rules against very outrageous avatars. Yeah, I can understand that. Uh, you know, you don't want to fly around, have somebody there who's a giant, giant dragon that's 50 meters wide or something. Fine. I don't, wouldn't have any problem with that. You know, I just wore a Tuscore avatar and all of a sudden and there for about two minutes, I get told to go change to a human. Uh, say so go change your avatar. That I'm not fine with. Uh, you know, if I came as a big, huge dragon, I could understand being told to change the avatar. That would be, I'd be okay with that, but... I don't like being treated like a little kid. That's the bottom line. Most adults are going to resent being treated. Like a little kid and being told, you know, go change your avatar. Oh, I mean, when was the last time you were told you go change your clothes? We're going to tell you what kind of clothes you can wear. That's what it amounts to. It limits creativity is what it does. There's something called a curiosity factor. You see, uh... If you wear an unusual avatar, it draws attention, and I love to get in conversations with people about Mars and UFOs and a few other things that interest me in I am. Because I am is the only place you can really discuss things with people. Campfire is a little looser than most places. I'll admit to that. Uh, but generally, an interesting avatar draws I am's, and then you get to talk to people about things. And not an interesting avatar. You know, everybody's avatar looks like everybody else's in that they're human. No, they don't look exactly like uh, everybody else's. I understand that. They are all human avatars, so they all look different. But when you have an interesting avatar like maybe an alien, for instance, that tends to draw people's attention and tends to get them interested. And they've eliminated all that, which means they're eliminating creativity, and that's all the other thing is I'm a very expressive, creative type, and I love the creativity that uh, Second Life gives you, and then I'll spread takes that away by saying that everybody's going to be a human avatar Probably wouldn't allow Merlin or, I don't know, Darth Vader, probably wouldn't allow that. Clown, uh, I can think of a few more. There's, I have a NASA astronaut avatar, that's no longer contemporary. Our fa space program's basically been eliminated by Obama. The United States is no longer a space-faring nation. 
we have, we're dependent on the Russians to get there. I do have a NASA av uh, astronaut avatar. I don't consider that to be contemporary. Anything but contemporary avatar. I just want to escape a little bit. You know, like I said, ISIS, Ebola, so forth. So, I don't need to be treated like a little kid. That's the bottom line. And I think the place has gotten really cult-like. Ran six to nine against in my little test. I don't need to be treated like a little kid and be told, you know, go change your uh, clothes. I'm your daddy. No. But I don't cut it. I'm an adult. I don't need to put up with this. I've left house prayer. That's the bottom line. That's a bug that I have up my rear end. Like it or not, it's the way it is. This is Artifacts of Mars. Thank you for listening. I know I ran a little longer on mine, but that's the way it goes sometimes. That's the way it usually goes. We are anonymous. We are legion. We are unstoppable. We do not forgive. We do.